Hey, my name is Shaylin Herrick. I'm the solutions leader for technology hiring at SHL. And like you, I have been getting a lot of questions and been hearing a lot of things about ChatGPT. And I thought, what better way to figure out how it can do on a technical assessment than to just take it for a spin myself. So I did, and I wanna share with you what happened. To get started, I had to act like a recruiter on my own, right? So I had to set up proper um, proctoring and plagiarism detections. And the one that I chose to, to focus on is copy and pasting, because I knew the first thing that I was gonna do is copy the question, paste it into ChatGPT, and then I was gonna have to copy the answer and bring it back. So the first thing to note is that prevention of copying and pasting meant that Automata was going to track session duration and it was also going to track multiple line insertions, um, which it successfully did. So when I paused to retype a question over in ChatGPT, it noted, hey, you're idle. This is taking a long time for you to do this. That shows up in our code replay. So any hiring manager can quickly identify there was this this idle time here. I want to look at exactly what happened. Following that, I had to copy and paste the solution produced by ChatGPT, and that meant that I was going to get flagged for multiple line insertions. Again, that shows up in code replay and can very easily be identified just by a quick snippet of color that can be clicked on. But then, of course, the million dollar question is, how did ChatGPT actually do? And it didn't really do very well. Um, so there were three scores, programming ability, functional correctness, and programming best practices. It did really well on programming best practices. It did not do well on functional correctness. That is surprising to me. The other thing that it did, which was interesting, is it got a partial score on programming ability. Again, a little bit surprising. If it did not do well on functional correctness, it got a little bit better on programming ability. Very interesting. Then on the last question, it actually completely failed. It did not produce compilable code at all. So the verdict here is that proctoring is a really great first line of defense if you are concerned about chatbots. And then the second thing to note is that ChatGPT doesn't absolve software engineers and future software engineers from knowing how to code. For those who do know how to code and can scrutinize the result that ChatGPT produces, they are actually more likely to be able to use this as a productivity boost in their jobs, um, which can really be a good thing. So there's lots more to continue to keep an eye on here as ChatGPT and other chatbots evolve, but I was very excited to give it a go in this first instance. Thanks for watching.